things are going to happen in your life. But remember this, life is 10% what happens to you. It's 90% what you do about it. You can stop complaining about life is unfair to me. No, it ain't. It's just life. But you have to go on. You have to find the strength from somewhere. When my mama died, my mama's death was the worst period of my life. I felt nothing like it ever before. When she passed, I thought I was going to die. What helps me handle grief is what the pastor said to me that day. He said, think of all the great moments you had with her. Think of all the things your mother taught you. He said, what I'm trying to get you to understand is in your darkest moment, think of all the great moments you had with her. Joy and depression cannot reside in the same space. After that, I had to change what I was thinking two years ago. I work all the time. And one day I caught myself because I was just talking about how much I got to do, how I'm always tired and I'm woe down. And somebody sent me something that changed my whole life. The plaque said, I can't complain about all that's on my plate when my whole goal was to eat. Engage in this one, indulge in it even slightly and you might as well forget the future because it's gonna forget you. Complaining, whining, a Bible word called murmuring. See, that'll ace your future. It's a deadly disease. If you don't think it's bad, ask the children of Israel. Story says, children of Israel were slaves. God performed a series of dazzling miracles and got them out. Remember the story? Heading for the promised land. From day one, they started to complain. They whined and cried and griped about the food. They whined and cried because it was too far, too cold, too miserable. I mean, they whined and cried for years. Finally, God said, I've had it, trip canceled. They died in the desert, never got to the promised land. Even God himself can only take so much. A friend of mine, working on a job, expected to retire there and one day they called him in the office told him he was fired and he had to leave then and if you came anywhere near him he will tell you his story even when he got a job he went on the job telling anybody who would listen and he always ended with it wasn't fair life isn't fair life just is so we, we can't even deal with what's fair I used to be a state legislator in Columbus Ohio there was one particular person that all of us knew. We called him Chicken Man. He had a feather in his hat. When he got out of his car, he would walk downtown with a baby carriage with two little baby dolls in there and a picture of a woman. All of us used to laugh at Chicken Man. Chicken Man woke up one morning and his house was on fire. And he got out of the window and left quickly only to get outside to hear his children and his wife screaming for help. And the flames were too hot, too awesome. He was desperate, frantic. Pretty soon the cries stopped. They perished in the fire. His brother-in-law came, grabbed Chicken Man and started beating him. You chicken, why did you save my sister? You're a chicken. He never ever overcame that tragedy. He was stuck. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? Huh? How long are you going to tell everybody at the bus stop and anybody who would stand and listen to you? How long are you going to repeat the same thing over and over and over again? Don't go around telling people what your story is. 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. They say, I'm glad that didn't happen to me. <laughs> so I had to let that go. All of us got stories to tell. All of us have experienced some tragedy and if we haven't, we will. 
You can permit it to let you let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I don't care how much you work on yourself. There are some times when things aren't going to go right. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. And you have to deal with it. Sometimes your life will be in a slump. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you. Continue to move. Stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. Find somebody that you can help so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. But if you want to grow orchids or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. You don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively to beat yourself up over the head. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. This is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. So yes, I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. See, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. You weren't created to retreat. You weren't created to run from opposition. When you stand strong and fight the good fight of faith, opposition will run from you. Looks like it's going to take a long time to get well, long time to accomplish the dream. Now get ready, it's going to happen sooner than you think. I wonder what awaits you if you'll just keep walking. Well, Joel, I have some big obstacles. We serve a big God. He spoke worlds into existence. He can get you to where you're supposed to be. When you pray, when you thank God that forces of darkness are broken, God hears your prayers. He sees you believing when you don't see things changing, thanking Him when you could be complaining. You wouldn't be hearing this if God didn't have breakthroughs coming your way. Just because you don't see anything improving doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. At the right time, things are going to change. My challenge is stay in faith until you see the suddenly. Keep on walking. Tune out all the negative voices and tune in what God promised. The reason you can't see a way is because it's not going to happen naturally. God is going to do it supernaturally. Don't try to figure it out. Just keep believing. Keep doing the right thing. Obstacles are about to come down. You're going to make it into your promised land.